Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the weirdness that happens with command rate on 11th gen Intel CPUs uh, due to the memory controller gear modes. So, um, yeah, before we get into this, uh, technically everything I say about gear 1 uh, does apply to like 10th gen CPUs, 9th gen CPUs, and all of the older Intel CPUs because those didn't have a gear 2. Basically, 11th gen in gear 1 uh, works the same as older Intel chips. Gear 2, however, is unique to 11th gen, and that's where things get weird and sort of that's that's the main focus of this video. But technically, the stuff that I say about how Gear 1 works applies to uh, older chips as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so by command rate, I mean this timing right here. Now, my daily system is not an Intel 11th gen system because I don't know why you'd want a daily an 11th gen CPU, but... <laughs> That's not my problem, that's Intel's problem. Um, but yeah, so we're talking about command rate, the timing down here in CPU-Z, and there's just some weirdness that happens with, well, yeah, there's, there's just some weirdness to be sort of aware of with uh, with uh, 11th gen CPUs um, when it comes to that, that timing right there. Um, now we're going to be taking a look at Intel's uh, documentation for the 11th gen here, the second volume of it, in fact. Uh, and this is a public document, you can download it from, oops, nope, 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 problems of having three monitors. Uh, you can download it from Intel's website over here, it's just this document right there. Uh, if you're wondering how to get to this part of Intel's website, just use, the, hopefully I'll remember to paste the URL into to the description of the video, because honestly, I have no idea how to get, get to this part of Intel's website. Like, if I just went to intel.com, uh, I have no idea where to go from here. I don't think, um, yeah, no, no, this this isn't working. So, uh, yeah, th this is where it's from, public documentation. Really cool of Intel to actually provide all of this super technical information. Uh, AMD doesn't do anything like this, which I find very annoying. And no, this video isn't sponsored by Intel. <laughs> this is like, I wish we had, like, I would just generally appreciate more technical documentation to be available. Anyway, let's go to page 111 where we get the command stretch register because basically this this is a data sheet here is just a bunch of descriptions for the various registers available on the CP on the 11th gen CPUs and a bunch of other stuff that I've just not been interested in. Like I don't know what the other stuff is because I don't care what the other stuff is. So there's other stuff in the data sheet, but I've not read it, so I don't know what it is. Anyway, um yeah, so page 111, we have command stretch. So this is the command rate register. Um, and the reason it's called command stretch is basically how long does the memory controller hold commands? Um, so which also directly, you know, uh, affects how often the memory controller can send a command, which is why we call it a command rate, right? So um, you have one N. Uh, 2n, 3n, and n to 1. Now, n to 1 you can just forget about as far as I'm concerned because there's no real reason to ever use this unless you think your memory overclocking isn't complicated enough as is. Um, there are applications for it, which is why Intel has implemented it. Those applications do not apply. Like, I've never used n to 1. I have no idea why I'd want to use n to 1. Um, but yeah, like, this exists. I don't know why you'd ever want to use it, but, you know, yeah, it does exist. Um, anyway, then we have 3n, which is basically only used for high, fr like max memory frequency valid, like max memory frequency validations, because it's terrible for performance. Uh, then we have 2n, which is uh, well on ten on eleventh gen, you really shouldn't be using 2n. Uh, on tenth gen, this is what you would normally use if you're trying to push for higher memory frequencies, because it is a huge stability booster at, at high memory clocks. And then 1n, which is sort of maximum performance at the penalty of a lot of, in a lot of situations, 1n doesn't really work on 10th gen CPUs. On 11th gen CPUs, it gets kind of funky. Because on 11th gen, like, 1n doesn't generally work at really high frequencies on 10th gen CPUs, but on 11th gen CPUs, that's not really a concern because the memory controller just doesn't do high frequencies in the first place. And so when you go up to, you know, say, DDR4 uh, 4000, or like 4266 or 4400 or something like that, 4600, anything like that, uh, you're going to be in gear two, right? And then Intel says here, notice that in gear two, the memory controller, 
memory controller uses only the low phase of the DCLK for commands, effectively doing 2N by default. So basically what's going on there is that the command rate, which most people think of as a memory timing, is in fact a memory controller timing. Uh, this sets how many, you know, how, like, how many commands the memory controller can set, send in a certain amount of time, um, or, like, you know, I can set, like, every, uh, based on the clock of the memory controller. So gear 2 underclocks the memory controller to half the memory, uh, half the clock of the memory. So basically what you end up with is we have this handy little, um, n n it's not really a data, like, sp spreadsheet, um, almost could be, but... So I've made this, basically, to illustrate that. So let's say we're, we're talking about DDR4-3600, you know, and you're running 1616, uh, you know, 361T command rate in gear 1. And so that means your memory is running at 1800 megahertz, your memory controller is running at 1800 megahertz, the memory controller can send a command every cycle, because it's at 1T, and that means, theoretically, it could send 1.8 billion commands every second. It doesn't actually need to do anywhere near that. Um, you really don't need to send that many commands. Um, the memory spends a lot of time being busy, You don't, which is why, like, the performance penalty of going from 1T to 2T isn't really that big. It's like, you don't need to be able to send a command every single cycle. It's not absolutely critical for performance, though it does help. Um, so on, like, 10th gen CPUs, where, you know, if you want to run, say, over DDR4-4000, you very regular end up with 2T, that's fine, because it really doesn't, like, you know, th this looks like a really big difference here, but it's not actually that big a deal, because you just don't need to send that many commands in the first place. But anyway, so in 2T, uh, gear 1, uh, well, now the memory controller takes two clock cycles to send a command, so at 1800 megahertz, you can only send 900 million commands every second. Um, okay, cool. Now, what happens in gear two? Well, in gear two, if you're in one tick command, you have one T command rate, the memory controller is clocked at only 900 megahertz. So, the memory controller, you know, it's still sending a command every single cycle, but the cycles are a lot longer. Literally twice as long. So now the IMC can still only send 900 million commands every second, which is the same as if you were in gear 1 to T. So that's sort of, like, that's the whole thing that Intel's uh, document here is trying to, uh, you know, that, that's what that means, basically. Um, and then also what's worth noting is if you use 2T in gear 2, uh, well, it does what, you know, like, it, again, just halves how many commands you'd be able to send, so now you're you're down to like 450 million commands every second. Um, so obviously this, like, this right here is slower than this. This and this is, if it weren't for the fact that Gear 2 has other consequences, like the fact that the memory controller is running slower in and of itself has a performance penalty to it, um, but if you ignored that, um, this and this are the same thing, um, and then this is really, really slow, um, is sort of what's going on with that. And so the weird thing with this is also that a lot of software will not actually necessarily pick up on this difference, um, and some software will, which is really annoying, because <laughs> there doesn't really seem to be a standard. So for example, hardware info, um, does differentiate, like, dis does make a distinction between gear 1 1T and gear 2 1T, um, because obviously gear 2 1T is actually 2, like, is, is actually 2T, and so if you open up hardware info and you have 1T set in the BIOS, um, but you're in gear 2, then hardware info will tell you that you're in 2T. If you open up CPU Z, it'll tell you that you're at 1T, because CPU Z doesn't account for the fact that gear 2 cuts your memory controller clock in half, uh, like it does. Um, either way, that's basically all I really wanted to say in this video, is just, yeah, gear 2, uh, has, like, one, like, running, like, it, ba basically, functionally, like, this doesn't really functionally mean anything, like, if you're on an 11th gen, and you're going for a high frequency overclock, like, you're stuck with this, and if you're going for a low frequency overclock, well, don't run 2T, and don't run gear, like, and stay in gear 1, right, like, that's, that's basically all there is to it, though I guess there could be an argument made for if you can't run 1T, 
command rate in gear one up to whatever like up to some medium frequency because the thing is in gear one on 11th gen you really can't go much above like 37 33 most of the time um so if you're in gear one and for whatever reason you can't run 1t command rate at 37 33 it might be worth it to just switch over to gear two and push the frequency as high as possible because the the fact that you're like you're going to be dropping down to 2n and might work out in favor for you like might work out in your favor for for performance overall um but then what like the the noteworthy thing is if you compare like memory overclocks from 10th gen to 11th gen and you see like 11th gen doing 1t command rate at like ddr 440 400 it is nowhere it's not the same thing as if a 10th gen cpu was doing ddr 440 400 uh 1t Okay, DDR4 4400 1T on a 10th gen CPU is, like, that. 10th gen doesn't have a gear 2. The memory controller on 10th gen chip runs at memory clock all the time, which is a big part of why 11th gen CPUs are able to do much higher memory clocks is because they just underclock the memory controller. So, yeah. Um, anyway, that, I think, kind of covers it. Hopefully it made sense. Um... It's not super useful information to know, in my opinion, but I don't know. Like, I, I just get annoyed. Well, I get kind of annoyed when I see people impressed by, like, 11th gen CPUs running 1T command rate at, like, insane frequen at insane memory frequencies when it's not actually 1T command rate. So that's sort of the main reason I'm making this video is, like, 11th gen doesn't actually have a proper 1T as soon as you go into a gear 2 because the memory controller gets underclocked. So, yeah, anyway... um. That's it for the uh, video. Um, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both the Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you'd check them out. And yeah, that's it for the video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.